Welcome back everyone to Open Line, talking about what place should Nathan Bedford Forrest have in Tennessee history. Uh, there is a bill that is being introduced in the legislature that would end uh, the recognition of Nathan Bedford Forrest Day in Tennessee. Of course, there's a lot of discussion about should there be a bust of Nathan Bedford Forrest there in the state capitol. Um, you know his history. I, we've talked about it. We have Representative Mike Stewart here, um, and we also have uh, Representative uh, Mike, Mark, Mike Sparks here. You're right here. Yeah. And Mike Stewart, um, we, we think will be here soon. We don't know. Let's uh, let's just go to the phones, though. Let's go to Jay. Hello, Jay. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi. Uh, I just had a question. Um, of course, Nathan, that's the force. I'm tired of hearing about it. It's like the gentleman said. We've got a lot of problems in this world and in our country. But uh, when General Forrest was in the Klan, as, uh, what I understand is the Klan was like the police. Not only was it about black folks, it was about you know, a drunk man not taking care of his wife, you know, they would they would uh, take care of that situation. And also, I know the gentleman's from Smyrna, and I'm from Giles County, which Sam Davis was killed at. And everything in Giles County is named after Sam Davis. You got Sam Davis yes. Park, you know, you got all kinds of things, statues. I just wondered if anything's been said about that, and I hadn't heard anything, and I'll hang up and listen. Thank you. All right, thank you. What do you think of that? Uh, that's what's next. That's what. That's my. That's my fear. That's that's what'll be next. Next, it'll be um, Andrew Jackson. Next, it'll be Thomas Jefferson. Next, it'll be um, George Washington. And uh, next, it could be Samson Keeble, the first African American state representative that come from my area that that's never talked about. It just surprises me. And like I say, he was Republican and a Confederate soldier. Now, he never probably fired a shot, but I think Samson Keeble, in fact, you know, I've been trying to push for a documentary about him, and to uh, be honest with you, nobody seems to care about it. You know? Do you really think, though, because again, do you understand how some people could be made to feel uncomfortable by the fact that somebody who was, you know, a leader in the Klan does have this honored place in our state? If, if, if that were to change, you think then there is this slippery slope. In other words, you think you have to fight this. Stop. We have to continue to recognize Nathan Bedford Forrest in the ways that we do. Because if we don't, then there's this cascading effect. Do yeah. you think that that is? Is that? Is that I, I think it is. Yes, sir. I think it's a slippery slope. And you know, we were talking off the air about that poem. Um, first they came, and and I can't remember who who wrote it, but it was a pastor. My understanding, he said, first they came for the communists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't communist. Then they came for the trade, the trade unionists. I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then then they came for um, the socialists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a socialist. Then they came for me, and no one was there to speak for me. So I think this is a slippery slope. And I tell you. I get really concerned, and I'm not the only one that feels this way. There's a lot of the folks, just like that caller, that, that probably feels like I do. Um, and I am from Smyrna, I'm Sam Davis, home. Um, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's dear to my heart, and it's dear to everybody that's grew up in Smyrna. Um, and, uh, you know, the man gave his life. Um, he gave his life because he wouldn't give up secrets, and he was only 21 years old. Um, those stories need to be, to be told. Uh, let's go to David. Hello, David. Yes. Hi. What's on your mind? Well, I think that the uh, the history should be taught and preserved, and that there are two terms as a historian that I want to introduce. One is primary sources, and the other one is historical revisionism. And I think in the South we're seeing a, a cultural genocide to cleanse away and to redefine people in the, in the correct political uh, in, in correct political correctness terms today not in the, there's a term that the German historians I cannot pronounce it is lip Zitzenslieben, but the the cultural and ethical times Harry Truman our president uh, who is a Democrat um, I considered joining the Klan, and he used the N-word, and uh, he was still a great leader, although he had those flaws. I speak as an ethicist and a historian because I do not want to see our country, uh, in spite of the fact that people have flaws or their morality or their uh, evolves or change, that we do away with them because there are no perfect human beings. 
and history must include not only the positive but the negative. Uh, and I think Nathan Bedford Forrest, and I have studied with, with some of his family members and done research about the birthplace and different historians. I think he has been totally mischaracterized. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, that there is a lot of spurious or false claims about him because people are hysterical at the moment. And this is the reason why you are seeing it's not on the media, but you're seeing all these southern uh, patriots that are riding around in pickups with the battle flag and trying to say that they are nonviolent and that they do. Uh, that flag, the red stands for Jesus Christ's blood, the white is for valor, and the stars are for the, uh, the states. And so I think that as a historian, it really bothers me when people are, are do not go back to the primary sources and discover the real person and do their research. Because uh, if you go down this trail, then, then Harry Truman has got to go to fall too. Yes. And that's in recent yeah. times. And he led so are you saying the, the Confederate too. flag, are you saying we shouldn't, they shouldn't have taken down the Confederate flag? Absolutely they shouldn't have taken it down. It's part of the, of the Southern history. It's a, it is a, as part of America's history. It's, a, it's an ethnic cleansing. It's a cultural cleansing. It's trying to rewrite history in terms of a, of a, a political correctness that's not only in our universities, in, 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 in the media, but it, it, it also is translated into some historical works. And I, as a historian, I know that every historian has a, 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 a bias when they write about some. I want the truth. And uh, the truth is that all cultures and all people have flaws, and they are bound by the uh, certain ethics and certain zeitgeists that they are dealing with. Should a culture fly a symbol like that above its state capital when it did? It did. It, the fight was for slavery. It was. That's to, to, not the truth. That so you don't think that's true? Truth. You don't think that's Our what the Civil War was about? Our founders had a totally different concept about uh, the founding of the Union. The, the Articles of Confederation, uh, Patrick Henry himself, and I've been to his grave. I've studied the life of Patrick Henry uh, extensively. Whenever they wrote the Bill of Rights, he was so concerned about liberty, he wouldn't even uh, sign off on it. Our founding fathers are for liberty. And Thomas Jefferson, he, he talked about slavery as holding a wolf by the ears. They knew they had a moral dilemma. But you cannot cleanse away and wipe away this history and hide it and hope to have truth yeah. because people will want the truth. All right. Well, okay. I appreciate your point of view. The other side of that is it makes people very – it stands for something um, that makes people at the very least uncomfortable. Um, and is that appropriate to, to, to have the state – Highlight it in, yeah. in such a way. I mean, it, we shouldn't forget about well, it, or we are doomed to repeat it. But should it be held in a position of importance, um, such as in South Carolina, the flag? Was? Well, if you think about it, it's not even a Tennessee conversation. That I is mean, not. It, I mean, how, how does I, I get disappointed with a few people, leaders maybe, that all of a sudden start commenting on something that's not even affect Tennessee. Why not take care of Tennessee's problems? You know, I showed you a picture um, when we were off there of two African friends, American friends of mine, in front of the Nathan Bedford Forest with me. You know, it's two. It's a, a detective, Kathy Hines, back in Rutherford County and Laverne, and and Pastor Brenda Bryant, and we have a good working relationship. Uh, and I talked to him about Nathan Bedford Forest. Um, I'm probably the only Republican that's got a picture of two African Americans with the Nathan Bedford Forest uh, Monument. I mean, hey, it's a badge of honor for me because I can work with folks. They can't call me a bigot. I just know the, the slippery slope we're going down and people need to wake up. Journalists need to wake up. Um, pastors need to wake up. Um, you know, I've seen the, 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 and I'm not trying to get off on a tangent here, but this, these gay pride flags, and I know I'm going to get some hate calls now, but, you know, we're seeing gay pride flags downtown Nashville and I couldn't post the Ten Commandments up in Rutherford County Courthouse. 
You can't post Ten Commandments, but you but government property will post gay flags downtown Nashville. What's going on here? That is, a, what is going that's on? a totally different I, well, issue. Well, it's um, a First Amendment issue, though. Um, I mean, we're talking about free expression. We're talking about the right to assemble. One of the pastors that I, that I work with was locked out of his own church in Laverne. All right, let's, How let's many go people know the, about that? That's, this stuff needs to be said, and, and if it needs to be said on Channel 5 with Ben Hall, this needs to be said tonight. Okay. Uh, they were locked out for two years. How right, many well, let's, people let's, know about this? Let's stay on topic. Let's go to Ann. Hello, Ann. Uh, yes, I agree with this gentleman. Uh, what about, uh, it's slippery slope. What about Andrew Jackson? I mean, he had black slaves. He raped his black slaves. He had children by his slaves. And... Uh, my relatives are Cherokee Indian, and look what he did to them people. I mean, are are we going to put all these people, take all these bus down, all these people? It makes me very angry, and I'm not the only one. We're tired of this crap getting stuck down our throat. So you say just leave it as it is? Yeah. I mean, it's history. Right. I don't like looking at Andrew Jackson on TV talking about him being a hero, but I don't go around belly aching about it. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. And there are the, these are these are complicated figures. They uh, no one is perfect. Yeah. And and so it could be that if we start examining every person in history, you could find fault. You certainly could. Yeah. But when it comes to something like slavery, that might be on a whole other level. At least that would be the argument. And should someone that that had a leadership position in the Klan be held in in, in a high regard. Well, with my, a my understanding recognition of Nathan Bedford Forrest Day in the state. Yeah, um, folks out of Google, um, Greg Tucker and uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest. He wrote a nice piece in Day News Journal about two or three weeks ago, and my understanding is he advocated for disbanding of the Klan. That's my understanding, and his and his um, column speaks to, to some of that. That's Greg Tucker. If you just Google it, um, Daily News Journal, the article should should come up. But you can see by that call and others that folks are very passionate. Um, oh yeah, we have a lot this. of people that are very. All right, we're going to take a break, and we're just going to go. We will. We're going to continue to go through the calls. If you're on the line, we will get to you. I promise. Um, there's one line open if you want to call. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.